Hi everyone, in this video we will learn about Blender's animation system. So without further ado, let's begin. Alright, now it's time to do what the main focus of this tutorial is, to actually animate. So let's go to the front view by pressing 1 and we'll create, we'll create a keyframe by pressing the I key. I don't know why the to animate you need to press the I key. I thought it had to be A, but then I think A is already taken. So I'm going to press, you get all these options when you press the I key. To start off with, I'm just going to select location. And then we'll go to frame 50. Uh, and we're going to move the object, say grab X. I'm going to move along the X axis to somewhere around here, let's say. Then press I again, and then location. You'll see here that two keyframes have been created. One at frame 1 and another at frame 50. So if I can now play back my animation by either pressing this play here or shortcut is to press Alt A. And there we see our first animation. How awesome does that look? Cool. All right. So one, one other thing we can do is we can adjust the timing of our animation. So if, say for example that I think this animation is a little bit too slow. I want to go a lot more quicker than that. I can always select the keyframe that I want and I can move it in closer. And you can see that yellow line at the on the timeline uh, being moved a little closer. And let's say I move it to frame 20. Now when I play it back, it's a lot more quicker. So you can obviously easily adjust the uh, timing and such for your animation very very easily and that's about it really now I'm going to show you a little bit of F curve tweaking so F curves obviously it gives the animator a lot more control over their animation so for example if I you'll notice here that uh, let's let's move this keyframe back a little bit let's say to frame uh, 200 I'm going to set this end time to 200. Um, you can see it's a little bit... Okay, maybe that's too slow. Let's say 100. So the, uh, the reason why I did this is because uh, it's getting a little hard to move it to 100. Okay, one thing you can do is you can press grab minus 1 if you can't uh, drag it more accurately like dra grab minus one by the way moves it one frame back whatever keyframe you selected okay so um, if I play back now it's a little bit slow but now you can see exactly what this F curve is doing you can see that as it approaches uh, to the end it slows down it doesn't just halt to an end just slows down like that so we can obviously play around with that so say we wanted to sort of speed up and end really really quickly then we can just go ahead and just change something like that that's going to make it instead of going up and then slowing down decelerating down oh that's the word decelerating it, re it decelerates as it goes towards the end we can change that and make it accelerate towards the end Bang! You can see it sort of accelerate there. So it gives the animator, as an animator, you have a lot more control over that, and you can also make it overshoot the mark a little bit, a bit of that follow through, that some of that stuff that we learned in the twelve principles of animation, and see it sort of bounce back. So as an animator, we can make these kind of tweaks and polish without really putting in more unnecessary keyframes and things like that. That's pretty much why the F curve editor is there so that we have a lot more control over our animation and that's basically it the, uh, that's that's how you animate another way to animate let's just quickly delete these keyframes uh, sorry is to press this button what this does is when you press this one let's go to the beginning of the key uh, beginning of the animation again and I've set this to uh, what as you can see like a record button so what this does, if I grab this, you can see that it says here auto keying on. So that means any what, whatever manipulation I do it, grab, rotate, or scale, it will automatically set a keyframe there. So let's say I start here. Bang, a keyframe is already created. Let's say I move to frame 100, and I move it here. 
rotate it, scale it up, scale it on the X axis. I don't know. Uh, there you go. It's cre it's created a keyframe here, and the one it uses is lock rot scale. So if I go I, this option here, that's what it uses by default. You can see it creates the location, rotation, scale, and each of these can be modified and played around with. So if I play back this animation now, obviously we get we get our anim uh, we get our object that animates by changing its location, its rotation, and its scale. So that's pretty cool. Playing around with these these f-curves, I know it looks a little crazy, but you probably need to be more advanced to know what these each does. So by selecting this, for example, you, I just select the Z location. So I can obviously move the Z and give, add more tweaks and things like that. So that's pretty much how to do an animation. If you don't like to do auto keyframing, sometimes you may, you may make mistakes by where you don't want to actually animate something, you just want to move an object, and you don't realize that, uh, oh no, it's something my animate movements are all being recorded. You can simply, well, I'll just quickly delete this. You can simply, I'll see, I'll just turn this off. You can simply uh, set a keying, what is this called? A keying set. So what? sometimes people get tired of pressing I and then selecting an option and then moving another few keyframes, I and then another option. You can just set a, a default here. So say, for example, I want to set a location as default. Now when you press I, um, it's always going to be a location. And then if I move, or, or you can even change it to rotation, just rotation. So that if I move in this area, and I move it here, so it moves the object from that position to this position, then rotate it, and hit I, you get that rotation. So you can see a keyframe has been created for a location, a keyframe has been created for a rotation. So you can do tons and tons of things like that. It's very, very easy to animate in Blender and obviously a very very quick as well. One of the reasons why I animate in Blender is because I do all my character animations by myself and I feel that Blender allows me to create character animations very very quickly and efficiently. Uh, granted I haven't tried other 3D software and I, I don't really have the money, quite cheap, so um, that's why I prefer to use Blender. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I generally find that Blender is the breeze to work with when animating. So, just to recap, there are two different ways to animate in Blender. First is by hitting the I key and then selecting one of these options here. And second is by using the automatic keyframe insertion and optionally selecting one of these options here. So, those are the main two ways of animating in Blender. I hope this video has been useful to you. Keep blending and I hope to see you in the next video.